this weekend, it's the long-awaited return of... Well, both of these fighters, we have the Ultimate Fighter Season 30 Flyweight winner. She's coming off that big win back in August. It's the ever-aggressively nicknamed Juliana Killer Miller, representing 10th Planet in San Diego. Matt, tinfoil hats abound. Yes. It's a big-time opportunity. And out of that gym, I mean, you know the man, Eddie Bravo. But there's so many great fighters that have trained out of 10th Planet. <laughs> In San Diego, and even if you consider it for Juliana Miller's flyweight division, former flyweight champ over at Bellator say. in Alima Lay McFarlane, and for Miller, we saw a great progression from the time as an amateur to a pro. The fact that she is so good at grappling, but her striking continues to make moves as she's come along this journey. She gets that big win over Brogan Walker back this summer. The takedowns. All of them were there, and the craziest part about it is for Miller, she fights this weekend for Walker, if you liked her from the season and from her time in Invicta, she actually fights next weekend. But I say this is a big comeback because Miller, we haven't seen her since August of last year. For Veronica Macedo, Veronica Hardy, as we have on screen, we haven't seen her in about three years, and it's a very long-awaited return because... I assumed, and I'll throw the picture up there from MMA Junkie, that she was retired after the concussions exactly. and the long time away. So if you don't remember Veronica, I'm going to refer to as Hardy for the video because her Instagram says Veronica Hardy, but it's still Veronica Macedo. We're going to say Hardy for the purpose of the video. So we'll get that out there now. For Veronica Hardy, when you do watch her fight, even going back to her USC debut... She was coming in off a draw, which is kind of weird. It is. You don't see that all that often. She comes in on short notice, takes on Ashley Evans-Smith. Now, for Hardy, the fight's coming into the UFC. She was a bantamweight. So she takes on Ashley Evans-Smith at bantamweight. She has Boris Mankowski in the corner. She's training out of Ankos MMA in Poland. And that's the craziest part about it for me is the fact that for Macedo, she's built out of Venezuela. Moved to the States when she was a kid. Trained all over Europe to get ready for her fights. And she switched gyms a lot. And I had no idea. Now, I knew that she commentated for Eris, or she has in the retirement. She's commentated for the UFC and Espanol. But her accent is a mix of, like, American English and British English. And that just surprised the heck out of me. I have a question. Yes. Has the UFC just put Veronica Hardy on ice waiting for this opportunity? No. If you've listened to any of the no, interviews no, I, that she's had, no. This is my point, though. I If Peyton Pritchard, for instance, got hurt and retired for three years, would the Celtics welcome him back with open arms? No, Veronica Macedo had terrible concussion issues. I understand, but my big point is, was she great during her UFC tenure? She had shown improvements at some points, but I would say the thing that I had expected her to excel the most in, which was a lot of the grappling, she did struggle with that a lot in her UFC tenure. Now, I understand she had fought some good grapplers, Jillian Robertson I being one of them, of course. She has good Muay Thai, but again, nothing that Hardy had done, I had really thought, was at such a high level to where, okay, we're going to keep her around through all of this. And I understand those are uh, difficult troubles and injuries that you can't just put off to the side, but still, I'm just confused as to why she isn't taking more kind of warm-up fights on the regional scene, because for me, that's kind of where Hardy should be. She's still very young in her career. When I had initially thought of this fight, I was like, oh my goodness, Hardy's got to be, what, in her mid-30s? Miller's the one kind of on her way up? But the thing is, they're pretty close in age, and I do think for Hardy, there was a good skill set to try to develop on and I'm surprised they're just throwing her back in there because right now she is a big underdog against someone who does offer sort of the yin to her yang with the MMA game. Miller's going to go for a lot of takedowns. Hardy's going to try to keep this one on the feet and if Hardy doesn't win this one, what do they do after that? I, I just feel like they're not giving her the best of chances to come back to the organization. For me, it would have been nice to see her and th they haven't really done this and I've always been a big fan of this. Hey, bring fighters back on a thing like Contender Series. I think it's a great thing if they get the win there, then it gives them a great reset to come back. I'm just surprised that this is the matchup they're going with for Hardy. That's all. A three and one fighter? That surprises you? But it's a three and one fighter who had won the Ultimate Fighter, who has a lot of amateur experience based off the Ultimate Fighter, because those are amateur fights, of course. They're exhibition for Hardy, fights. Ex either way, there are still fights that they had that are not counted towards her record. So there's still fights. And for Hardy, it's not like she has a wealth of experience either. I know she's had more fights in the UFC, but they haven't necessarily been going her way. My only point is, I just feel like for Hardy, there was a better way to cut or to reintroduce her, I guess to the UFC because I think Miller is going to be oddly the bigger fighter. We were talking about this before we started filming. I know Macedo, sorry, Hardy was the one who had fought at a higher weight class, but still Miller frame-wise is very large and I think she is going to use her frame to really try to wrap her up with some of those clinches. She's not a perfect comparison, but a lot of what Miller does remind me of Jessica Penne and I know Penne was a fighter who her prime was a little bit a while ago. A lot of people won't remember her for the, I guess, the highs that she had, but Miller's someone who is going to try to wrap you up in the clinch. Going to go for a 
lot of her takedowns from that position, and I do think Hardy's going to struggle with that. The weird part about it for Hardy, if you look at just the debut against Ashley Evan smith it was on really short notice. It was at 135, and they say, okay... She's a black belt in Taekwondo. She's a brown belt at that time in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. She also is a brown belt in Karate. And you see a lot of that in her style. And from the outside, she's a long, rangy, southpaw striker, which is weird to say because she's going to be shorter than a lot of fighters, both at Bantamweight but as well at Flyweight. But she does do a good job of cutting angles, getting in and out, throwing a lot of really good volume. And I know her strike differential in the UFC is a poor number. But you go down through the level competition for Veronica Macedo. She makes the debut against Ashley. Evan Smith, she ends up losing. She takes on Andrea Lee, she ends up losing that fight as well. But if you go back and you watch that fight, and you even listen to Dan Hardy in the debut against Ashley Evan Smith, because that's kind of the awkward bit of it. He's commentating that fight. The direct quote is, she possibly has the highest level Taekwondo that we have ever seen in the octagon. Dan Hardy never watched a single Man. Anthony Pettis fight. Ah, uh, Dan Hardy was shooting that shot from day one. I think Dan Hardy knew someone was no, going to rewatch Veronica that. Macedo, they also talk about the fact that she had a husband at that point. So it's a little well, awkward maybe that he way. Didn't. But when you go back and you watch these fights, I mean, then you go into Macedo's next fight. She's taking on Andrea Lee. Is she still dating that bad guy at that point? Yes, yeah, she is. So that one was tricky. But out of that one, they say, okay, well, right before Macedo's UFC debut against Ashley Evan smith she broke her elbow before that fight, but she took the fight anyway. So, okay, it is what it is. She takes the fight against Andrea Lee. She has a really hard time with the grappling. She has a hard time with the striking. She takes on Jillian Robertson, struggles with the grappling. She takes on Pollyanna Viana. That was that crazy, like... It was. The, it was like a spinning top, and then all of a sudden there was a submission win. And then Macedo takes on B.M. who at the time had a record of, depending on how exhibition fights go and so on and so forth, it was either 2-0 and or 1-0 and in MMA. And she gets outstruck, and she struggles finding the distance in that. So I went through and I listened to a lot of Macedo interviews getting ready for this. I watched a lot of the tape, down to clown with the Veronica Macedo stuff. And she talked Hardy. to GHK of the All-Star MMA Macedo fights Hardy now. And in that interview, she said, listen, I really struggled with, you know, the, the concussions. I struggled with the injuries. The fight that I took against uh, Bia Malecki, it was really tough because I moved up to 135 to take the fight. And I, when I heard her say that, that just that one little bit, I thought, that's kind of weird because all the fights coming yeah, into like the UFC was at 135. Fought Ashley Evan Smith at 135. Moved down to 125. And then fought Malecki at 135. And she kind of slowed down as the fight went on against Malecki. So maybe it was due to injuries. I don't know. It's just for Macedo. It's been about three years away. For Miller, she loves. And it was against uh, Neil. It was the fight that she had before that on uh, The Ultimate Fighter. She really likes the body lock to then get the trip takedown. And against Brogan Walker... Even when Walker was having success with her striking, Walker would initiate the clinch to then get herself taken down by Miller. You saw Miller go out there, land in top position. She was just grounding away with the elbows and the ground and pound. She picks up the win there for Miller. Body lock to trip takedowns. That is her specialty. She's not going to go in for single legs, high crotch. She doesn't go for double legs. The way Penne goes for takedowns is more throws, but I do think there is a fair comp between the two. But Juliana Miller, where she struggled, whether it's the Walker fight or otherwise, it's with her striking. And she does tend to look like a grappler who's then learned striking as like a second language. It's and slow too. In, in the fight against Walker, she still struggles with striking defense, getting her head off the center line, which is where this is kind of an oil meets water type of fight. Juliana Miller, very adept when it does touch the ground. Veronica Macedo is no, you know, fish out of water when it does come to the ground. Although the wins and the losses will tell you otherwise. The one trouble I have, though, is Veronica Macedo is a much better striker than Juliana Miller right. when it's on the outside. Regardless of the height and the reach... It's, it's how you use it, and Miller does tend to even struggle striking against smaller fights. I, I agree with everything you say, but I, I just think the way that Miller walks forward is going to negate a lot of the volume that Hardy's going to be able to do. Again, I agree with all the points you bring up. Again, Miller will struggle in that area, but just the way that she will kind of zombie herself forward, and that's the thing. If she was fighting, Andrade, I guess, fights at 125 sometimes, but you get the idea. A real devastating puncher who could make you pay for walking in for poor defense, then yes, I will worry about Miller. I guess Manon Ho would be a good example of that because she's really going to sit down on some of those straight shots and mix her kicks in. I, I just don't know if Hardy's that type of fighter. I think maybe early on, you're right. She can get good volume, maybe even win that first round. I just think at a certain point, Miller is going to be able to close the distance. And from that clinch, 
I think it's going to be difficult for Hardy to even A, escape the clinch, and B, if it gets down to the mat, we've seen Hardy struggle defensively in a lot of those positions before, and the one thing about Miller is, we can talk about her weaknesses on the feet, but we got to give her flowers for how good she is she on the mat. She looked like Brock Lesnar with that ground and pound. Elbows, <laughs> hammer, fist, she just kept going with it. So, for it Miller, in the stand-up, even in the Walker fight, she did struggle a little bit with that southpaw look, and every single Walker left hand landed. That's where Macedo... Hardy can come in at this point and really start to implement her game plan. But when you look at the odds, you factor in the layoff for Hardy at this point. Miller open to minus 200. She's a minus 450 favorite. I don't know who's laying that chalk because that sounds insane. And if you look at it for Hardy, open plus 170, plus 320. We have a look at the topology votes, Matt. Surprise to us, they are to you. I'm going to say over under 72.5% Miller. Just from where the odds are, because they're pretty ridiculous, I'm going to say that they're over. All right, let's have a look. And they're way over. 863 total votes, 89% going with Miller, 48% by decision, 36% by submission, 11% have uh, Hardy, 72% by decision. But Juliana Miller, very good with the grappling. Macedo, well-rounded, good with the striking. She trained at one point with Ankos. Then she trained with MMA Factory for quite a while. Fernan Lopez, before it was cool, was coaching people in the UFC. And then if you look at it right now, she's getting a little bit of work in in the UK, really trying to work some of that strength and conditioning. So really eager to see a member of Full Reptile competing this wow. weekend. I wonder if Dan Hardy's going to be in the corner. Who do you have here? I've got Juliana Miller. The, the problem is, again, I think we did break down an area where Hardy can have success, but the problem is I don't know how she's going to be able to sustain that success throughout 15 minutes. I think she will be able to volume strike on the outside. She has a good inside leg kick. That might be able to disrupt some of the movement of Miller as she walks in, but the thing is, Miller is quite relentless with her game plan, and she will eat quite a few shots. Just get into the clinch, just get down to the mat, so for those reasons, I do admit Miller. I mean, Veronica Macedo has one thing that Juliana Miller doesn't. I know Miller's an ultimate fighter winner, but like in 2001, that song by Vermont's own Stained, I know it's been a while, but that Andrea Lee fight was a fight of the night, and all three judges scored it, Matt. 3027 Andrea Lee. So that's a tricky one to be a fight of the night. But I have Juliana Miller, even though I set it up this way, I have Juliana Miller ever so slightly. Darren Hardy's the only other person in the world who would talk about this fight for 12 minutes. We've I, done a great job breaking this down. I think the size of Miller is the difference here, but again, the striking defense worries me a little bit. She came on the channel after her fight against Walker, and she was kind of surprised that we weren't necessarily lovers of the nickname Killer Miller. It's just too aggressive. I don't mind Killer. I like it when it rhymes. Would you agree with me though? Miller's difficult because I think she has a very high ceiling but it is very difficult to judge where it is and that's the thing about this Hardy fight. Even this Hardy fight might not really prove exactly where she is. It would just be nice to see a prospect be really active early in their career. We'll see how it goes. Let us know down below in the comment section who you have. I ever so slightly have Juliana Miller. Way too big of a favorite. A lot of avenues for that striking to come in for Veronica Macedo. Some big time fights on this card. 15 total. Lock it in. Keep it locked in and let's get into it, Matt.